Hi, I'm Bob Wang. Economics is one of the most important disciplines we need to study to understand the world and people better. It also helps us make better decisions. Microeconomics investigates the choice people and firms make and how these choices impact markets. We look at the behavior of individuals and firms when they face scarce resources. For example, how do I make my consumption choices with limited income and budget constraint? Or in a similar way, how do firms make a production choice when they are limited by resource availability, such as labor and land? Microeconomics also examines how people's behavior and choices affect market prices. Adam Smith called the market price an invisible hand that directs economic activities and leads to desirable market outcomes that maximize the well-being of society as a whole. In this series of videos, I'm going to break down economics into 10 simple principles. They could be put in three parts. How people make decisions how people interact, and how the economic as a whole works. The first part is about how people make decisions. You will learn scarcity and trade-offs. I will show you the fundamental concepts in economics, like opportunity costs, margin, and incentives. The second part tells us how people interact, especially in the market, and why markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. What determines market prices? The market prices are closely related to our daily life. You will also know what happens when the market fails. In the third part, we will look at how the economy as a whole works. You will learn inflation, employment, and the standard of living. All are essential things in our daily lives. In these videos, you will learn the basic concepts in economics, the tools economists use to analyze problems, and the most important thing, the economic way of thinking. Microeconomics not only focuses on market and market prices, but it also cares about what makes a market more or less fair or more or less efficient, such as what determines wage levels and how income changes across generations. Economists often evaluate government policies and interventions, such as the minimum wage. In short, microeconomics looks at the choices and behaviors of economic agents, that is, the firms and individuals, how they interact in the market and what determines the market prices. First, let's take a look at the 10 principles of economics. Let's go to the first one. People face trade-offs. Because resources are limited and scarce, all decisions involves trade-offs. For example, I want to buy black chocolates, white chocolates, brown chocolates, milk chocolates, hazelnut chocolates. I want it ferro rocher, lean and springy, and Hershey's. I may not need them, but I want to have all of them. Is it possible? No. It's not possible. I cannot have all of them at the same time because my budget is limited. So I face trade-offs. If I have $5 today, I will have to consider which brand I should buy or whether I should buy chocolates today. I may spend that $5 on textbooks how to spend our money and how to allocate the resources 
is an important issue we deal with every day. You have already heard the saying, "There's no such thing as a free lunch." There might be free lunch in the sense that we don't need to pay money for it, but it is not free in economics because you have to give up some other things, such as time. You give up spending time with your friends. Time is the most valuable resource. You can hang out with your best friend. You can study economics, or you can go to a party. But you cannot achieve all at the same time. For every hour we spent at the party, we gave up an hour we could have used studying economics. Or for every hour we study economics, we have to give up an hour that we could have been studying mathematics. We always face trade-offs. We cannot have everything at the same time. We usually allocate the scarce resources to something we most need. When we look at the firms, the firms must allocate the inputs and resources efficiently as well. For the whole society, it also faces scarce resources. Society has to decide what jobs have to be done, how many goods and services we should produce, and. How the goods are distributed. A society faces three types of trade-offs. The first type is between guns and butter. Guns stand for national defense, and butter stands for consumer goods. The more a society spends on national defense to protect its people, the less it can spend on consumer goods. To raise its people's standard of living. Also important in modern society is the trade-off between a clean environment and a high level of income. The laws that require firms to reduce pollution, raise the cost of producing goods and services. Because of these high costs, the firms earn smaller profits, pay lower wages. To workers and charge higher prices to consumers. The cleaner environment and the improved health come at the cost of reducing workers' income. Another trade-off society faces is between efficiency and equality. Efficiency means the society is getting the maximum benefits from its scarce resources. Equality means that. Those benefits are distributed uniformly among society's members. We could represent the economy with an economic pie. Efficiency refers to the size of the pie, and equality refers how the pie is divided into individual slices. Think of the government here. Social welfare and unemployment benefits come from tax. In other words, the government. Takes money from the rich people and give it to the poor. It's a system to improve equality, but by looking at another perspectives, it reduces the reward for working hard, and as a result, people work less and produce fewer goods and services. When the government tries to cut the economic pie into more equal slices, the pie gets smaller, the efficiency decreases. When the equality improves, the first principle of economics, people face trade-offs, tells us that we could not achieve all the goals and have to decide. We have to find a balance between them. When we talk about economics, we talk about individuals, families, firms, and society. We talk about how people and firms allocate scarce resources. We don't have enough resources that can satisfy everyone's wants. That's why we always have to face trade-offs. Economics is a powerful tool that helps us to make better decisions.